If you receive a collection letter from the IRS, it's crucial to take action. The IRS has resumed sending those automated collection notices to all taxpayers with outstanding balances due. Uh, For about two years during COVID, these notices were paused to kind of help clear the backlog of processing those paper tax returns and the correspondence that accumulated during the pandemic. If you uh, receive one of the following collection notices that I'm about to go over, it's important that you take action and don't ignore it. Uh, Notice CP501 is the first balance due reminder notice. Notice CP503 is the second balance due reminder notice. And notice CP504 is the final balance due. That's it. That's the that's the last time they're going to um, remind you of your balance due. Ignoring these notices can lead to serious consequences, including wage garnishments, bank account levies, um, and asset seizures, personal and business. So um, what should you do? if you receive a letter from the Internal Revenue Service. All right, let's say you you open up your mailbox and you're expecting a few bills here and there, some catalogs, um, but what you find is a collection letter from the IRS. Woo! It can feel like you are living in a nightmare that you can't wake up from Um, When you receive a collection letter from the IRS, trust me, I understand. And even worse, what if that letter includes a demand for payment? That's the last thing anybody needs to deal with right now. So what do you do um, now since you have received the collection letter from the IRS? I'm going to share a few key things to do. First thing you need to do is take a deep breath. It's easy to panic when you get a notice from the IRS, but getting scared is not going to get you anywhere. It's not going to help with anything. So um, you'll need to think clearly to take on the IRS. Trust me, and letting your emotions guide you is the last thing you want to let happen. The first thing you need to do is to check the return address. Um, Make sure it's actually from the Internal Revenue Service and not another government agency or um, a scam because it can be a scam. If it's from the IRS, uh, the notice will have instructions on how to respond to the notice and who to contact. Um, So make sure you look for those two things. Second thing you need to do is read the notice carefully. Yes, just read it. Read it. If you don't understand, call for help. But not every notice from the IRS is terrible news. Like some of it is is minor. It could be something as little as a mismatch, um, some mismatch paperwork or some transposed numbers that your tax preparer probably did. Uh, little stuff like that is are things that you probably can handle on your own. And it may not even require you to pay any extra money. It's probably just a matter of calling in and giving them the right information. So before you do anything else, um, take the time to actually read the notice carefully. I'm seriously, I'm serious, read it. Uh, Find out precisely what the letter says and what the IRS is proposing. Is the IRS claiming you underreported your income for the past year? Are they saying that you took a deduction that you didn't qualify for? Um, were you given a credit that you didn't qualify for? Is the tax agency challenging your interpretation of a statute? Things like that. Um, The more you know about what the IRS claims, the easier it will be to defend yourself and ultimately save you a lot of time, money, and headaches dealing with the IRS. Okay, so uh, notice CP504 in particular Uh, That's also referred to the final notice. That letter, uh, that notice is mailed to you because the IRS has not received payment on your unpaid balance. Um, It tells you exactly how much you owe, and that includes the penalties and interest that accrues. Um, It tells you when it's due, and it also tells you how to pay 
before further collection action takes place. And trust me, you don't want any further action to, t- to take place. Um, if you choose not to respond to notice CP504, if you book uh, within 30 days from the date of the notice, the IRS can levy you. Yes, this further collection action uh, can include them levying your wages or any other income you have, your bank accounts, your business assets, your personal assets, and that includes your home and your car, uh, your retirement accounts, your social security benefits. Like they, the IRS have, they have a lot of power. Uh, they will levy uh, up to the amount that you owe them to collect. They'll do whatever they need to do to collect from you. Uh, they can also file an issue what's called a notice of federal tax lien. They can have your passport revoked or denied. I know you don't want that to happen. So it is important for you to understand that even though um, you weren't receiving those notices on a regular basis during the times when the IRS stopped sending them during COVID, when they had the collection letter pause, interest and penalties continued to accrue. So what you owe two years ago is going to be um, a lot more than what you owe today because it didn't stop. Okay, so let's get back on track to um, on what else you'll need to do if it's not a CP 504. You've read the letter. You fully understand what the IRS is asking for. Um, The next thing you'll need to or you'll probably want to do is pull out your tax return and your supporting documents. Um, As I stated earlier, some tax notices are merely it could be something very minor like a math error. Um, but others are more serious. So make sure you read it and understand it. Um, Now that you understand what the IRS is stating, um, you'll want to look at what your tax preparer claimed when filing your tax return. Or if you did it yourself, look at what all you put on your tax return. Um, Look over your tax return and compare it to the collection letter. Look for things like uh, mismatch numbers, erroneous entries, meaning something that's on there that you weren't aware of, um, and compare your W-2 numbers and all of that. Uh, If everything seems good to go, the next step is to get out all of your supporting documents. Those supporting documents uh, may include like your 1099 from your bank or your brokerage accounts, like your stocks, uh, your W-2 forms from your employer, And anything else that you included on your tax return, um, you'll need all those supporting documentations. If you took deductions against your income, you um, will also want to gather those documents and keep them handy because um, more than likely you're going to need them. Uh, Okay, so um, next you need to take prompt action. Everything dealing with the IRS has a deadline. One thing is certain when it comes to fighting the IRS, Wasted time is a lot of wasted money. The interest and penalty clock starts ticking the moment the supposedly erroneous tax return is filed. And every minute that you wait could be more money out of your pocket and more time wasted. And if you wait too long, the IRS can, without a court order, garnish 90% of your net pay and they'll clean your bank accounts out. They can also seize your home and your other assets. The number one thing to do is to act fast. Remember, everything has a deadline, uh, which is why you get those series of letters and they're automated. That means finding all your documents that were um, that all of your supporting documents and make sure that you respond to everything immediately. Once you have everything together, um, you can take the next And arguably the most critical step, if it's a bigger problem, you need to find a suitable professional. Taking on the IRS is not something that you want to do alone. Uh, You wouldn't go to court alone. You wouldn't go to court without an attorney. So why on earth would you want to try to go up against the IRS without expert representation? Even if you are confident in filing your taxes and handling your finances, 
Arguing with the IRS is not a DIY. It's not a do-it-yourself activity, it's especially with these new inexperienced agents. It's like the blind leading the blind. If you hope to limit the damage and reduce the amount um, or the proposed amount that they are demanding, uh, you'll want a professional in your corner anyway. Working with a tax relief specialist could save you a lot of money in the end, um, along with countless hours of grief and stress in dealing with the Internal Revenue Service. The sooner you seek professional tax help from a licensed enrolled agent or a tax attorney, um, the better. So, you know, do yourself a favor and just don't wait until it's too late. Um, IRS problems can affect all aspects of your life. The stress of not filing or paying your tax returns could make you lose a lot of sleep. Um, if you're looking for a tax resolution special specialist that can help you um, to help you ease the stress from your situation, um, we offer a free, no obligation consult consultation with one of our tax resolution experts. Um, so you won't have to worry about confidentiality or the cost because the consultation is free um, and it's with absolutely zero gimmicks or commitments. Um, so go ahead and schedule your appointment with one of our tax resolution specialists today by going to www.mjtax.com or you can give us a call at 706-507-2481.